One of the questions that I get asked quite frequently is, Chris, what are the system requirements for On One Photo Raw and what the heck do they all mean? So that's what we're going to unpack on today's video. There's not going to be any photo editing. So if that's something you're interested in, then go ahead and check the description box. There will be a link to a video that'll get you on track with watching photo edits. However, if you are one of those people that are considering picking up on one, but you're not quite sure about the system requirements or what the heck they all mean, that this video is especially for you. Now, before we start unpacking some of these system requirements, here's what I would recommend. One, go over to the on one website and download the trial version of on one photo raw, test it out on your machine, see what it's doing and test out every single feature that you will ever care to use inside of on one photo raw. And if you got questions about if the software can or can't do something, then just go ahead and drop that in the comment section and I will answer those questions for you. So that way you know if this is a software that's gonna fit your needs, all right? Because that's the whole point behind picking up software or anything, it should fit the needs of you. Now, after you've tried out on one photo raw, and if you think that it's the software for you, then consider using the link in the description box below to purchase on one photo raw. It is an affiliate link. That means I make a small commission, but that's at no extra charge to you. It's a great way of supporting this channel and I greatly appreciate it for the work that I put in, in bringing content about on one photo raw. And if you do decide to pick up on one and you're brand new to the software, then consider subscribing to this channel because I publish a lot of content teaching how I use on one photo raw in a very, I think, genuine way. You let me know you get to be the judge of that. Now let's go ahead and jump into the computer, go over some terms and go over system requirements. So there's a few terms that I think everyone should know before we dive into these system requirements that on one has on their website. The first one is reduced instruction set computing or RISC. Now I'm no computer architect or computer genius. These are just terms that I Googled and I understand at, you know, the basic level, which I think is appropriate for what we're going to be doing today, but definitely do more research if whatever I say isn't really clear, but essentially these are a set of instructions that are small, simple, and more uniform to make decisions for your computer. All right. Now that's all that that stands for. It's a, inf it's a computer code, if you will, that goes onto the CPUs and it just makes it easier for computers or the computing to be done. All right. The reason why I put that in here is because the next chip or the next term down is a type of chip or CPU called advanced RISC machine. And this stands for arm. And these are a type of CPU that in simple terms is the brain of your computer, or at least the device that it's in. Now, the devices that we commonly see arm in are smartphones, tablets, wearables and mobile devices. So your smartphone, tablet, all that stuff is using this smaller, easier, simpler instruction set to do all of the processing that it does. And that's why uh, I wanted to go over those two terms, right? But more importantly, on one does not support ARM chips. And we'll see that here in the system requirements, but that's the reason why I wanted to kind of talk that through. So if you're curious, like, hey, does my machine have an ARM chip in it? Then that may be something for you to go and look up. But if you're not using like a Chromebook, which likely has an ARM chip in it, then I think you might be fine. All right. Then we have the solid state drive, and I'm pretty confident that many people are familiar with this, but I put it in here just in case you're not. A solid state drive is essentially a hard drive that doesn't have any moving parts, and it tends to be a lot faster than the traditional hard drives that we're used to hearing spin and make all that noise. So with the system requirements, 
it's pretty straightforward on one lays it out pretty well and i'm just going to try and clarify some of the areas that may not be as easy to decipher so for the minimum requirement column we're just going to uh, jump through this real quick mac os 12 and above if you are using a mac computer just make sure that you have the latest version that's my recommendation or make sure that you have level 12 or version 12 um, on your computer or higher. And then of course, if you're using Windows, make sure you got version 10 or 11. That's pretty straightforward. I don't think many people are going to be confused about that. Where I get a lot of the questions comes in with the processor. Now we already covered ARM processors are not supported. We know roughly where those ARM processors are being uh, deployed or used. And if you're not using one of those devices to run on one, you're probably going to be OK. But just in case your laptop does run an ARM processor, just know that on one doesn't work. But also defer to my original statement, download the software, try it on your computer, because that's the best way to tell for sure if on one is going to work on your specific machine. That's hands down the best way of doing it, all right? It's completely free for 30 days, so try it, all right? But with that being said, if you wanna go long-term and you wanna make sure that it does work, minimum requirement, you need to have an Intel or an AMD processor with four cores. And then the other information here, it gets way too technical in my personal opinion. Just make sure that when you Google the type of processor that you have in your computer, that it meets the requirements right here. Now, if you're using an Apple computer like myself, I'm on the Apple Silicon and the computer I'm recording all of this on is the M1 Mac Mini. And it's really like the first M1 Mac Minis that came out. So I meet the requirement with the Apple Silicon. And if you are in the Apple Silicon family, then you know that you are and you'll know that you've already met that requirement. Then we move down to RAM and here's where it gets a little bit interesting, but don't overthink it. If you got eight gigabytes of RAM, you're probably going to be fine. And if you got 16 or if your computer shares the RAM, like my computer shares the RAM with the, uh, or I'm sorry, the GPU and the CPU, they share the, the RAM, then that means I need to have 16 gigabytes of RAM installed on my computer in order to run on one smoothly, all right? Or more, right? Because that's gonna be in the recommended column there. Then we move down to the hard drive. And in the minimum requirements, all you have to do is have six gigabytes of space available on whatever hard drive you have installed. That's pretty straightforward. When it comes down to graphics, I do wanna pause and kind of foot stump the fact that we're processing images, which is a visual thing, which means a good graphics card is going to make the difference of the performance that you receive with on one. So you definitely want to make sure that you have a later or a more recent graphics card and that it has built in RAM. If you are using a windows based machine, if you're using the Apple Silicon Mac, or if you're on an older Intel Mac, um, you just want to make sure that you have more RAM built into your computer. I think the older Intel Macs had separate GPUs and those had four or eight gigabytes of RAM, but don't, don't quote me on that. I don't really remember. Uh, I've just been using Apple Silicon for the past five years and kind of brain dumped the specs on my last iMac. With that being said, you definitely want to check, all right? This is the one area where uh, when people reach out to me, this is the, the portion where they're not meeting the system requirements, all right? And that's why they're having such poor performance with on one. Now, when we come over to the recommended column, I think that this is where everyone should be. And if I were, if I were the one uh, helping you pick a computer, I would say, get the stuff that's over here on the right. Don't get the stuff over here on the left, especially if you are getting ready to purchase a new computer. I would say get the stuff on the right because 
this is going to be outdated relatively soon. Like eight gigabytes of RAM isn't going to get you very far with the new software and all the AI stuff that's coming out with it. Like you need at least 16. And I even think 16 is going to become obsolete, but that's just my personal opinion. With that being said, make sure that you're updated to the latest version of Mac OS that your machine can handle. And then when you come down to the processor, if you're using Intel or AMD, eight cores of processing uh, power is what's recommended. But here's where I would expand a little bit with the Apple Silicon aspect. We're now on the fourth version of the M series chip. All right. And the M1 is not going to compute as fast as the M4. And I'm talking just the base models. I'm not even talking about the M1 Pro, M1 uh, Max, or M1 Ultra, or M2 Pro Max and Ultra. I'm not even talking about like those series of chips. I'm speaking purely just the base model M series processor. So an M1 versus an M4. M4 is going to blow the M1 out of the water. All right. Newer technology, that's to be expected. So, Chris, what's your point? My point here is if you are going to be using an Apple Silicon computer, using a later chip is going to do you better. However, I'm using an M1 Mac Mini and on one works just fine. It works better on my M or M3 Pro chip, but on my M1 base model chip, it's working just fine. And also on my M1 MacBook Air. So if you're in the Apple Silicon family in any regards, you're going to be fine. But just know that the further you are along in the category, the better you'll probably be seeing some performance. I get off my soapbox on that. All right. 16 gigabytes of RAM or more is what's recommended. And I would say get 24 if you can. If you can afford 24 gigabytes of RAM in any computer, Windows or Mac, that's going to do you better than the 16, in my personal opinion, uh, just because of all of the multitask that the AIs have to do local to the machine. So just keep that in mind. And then the hard drive, solid state drive. That's why we talked about it. It's just saying, hey, don't have a drive with moving parts. It's going to move a lot faster and be a little bit more efficient for you if you have that. So that's why uh, that's in the recommended column. And most computers nowadays, they have solid state drive. So I think you'll be OK. And then when we get to the graphics cards over here, essentially, it's all the same information. The only difference is have eight gigabytes of RAM instead of four, have eight. Now, if you get if you have more, that's even better. But eight is going to do you well. Now, I will make note if you're using an Apple Silicon computer, you are using the unified RAM. So what that means is whatever your RAM count is, let's say it's 16, you're going to be sharing that between your computing functions and your GPU functions. So having more is going to be better. And that's why I was saying if you have 24, that'll be great because you can inside of on one kind of reallocate resources on your computer and say, hey, only use this much for the virtual RAM to manage GPU things and then leave the rest of it for your CPU. But that's still that's getting a little bit more technical than I think I need to be in today's content. If you got questions about that, leave it in the comment section below. I'd love to start a discussion and help whoever I can with that. What is the so what on this? Basically, if you are using an Apple computer, especially the Apple Silicon, you're going to be OK. If you're using a Windows machine, you likely need to look deeper into your system specs just to make sure that it's going to work. But if you download that trial and test it out on your computer and if it doesn't work, then you know that it's not going to work. And if it does, then great, it's working. And that's the best way for you to figure this all out. Now, if you do decide to pick up a Mac computer, the M4 Mac mini is, I think, 500 US dollars. I'm not sure what it is in the international space, but they're relatively inexpensive. 
Now, I'm not making a case that you get the base model Mac Mini because that's usually going to not meet the recommended requirements. So make sure that you spec out, at least in the RAM department, that you get a 16 gigabyte RAM computer or more, um, preferably 24 if you were asking me. And then everything else you would meet inside of the Apple Silicon family. So at least with the M4 chip. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm not a technical genius. So if I miss something, please leave it in the comment section below. And I'd love to hear people's recommendations on what type of computer you are running on one on and what the specifications are to help those who are really looking to see if their computer is up to the task of running on one foot of raw. So if you want to help out the community, then please leave your computer specs down in the comment section below. And until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.